<laughs> this is my application for a bitchin' boot camp. Look at me. I'm wearing a kilt. My name is McKinley Thacker. I'm even with 30 people in the shop, it always seems like we have more cars than people to work on them. Especially in the metal department, and things are just getting busier. What's up, guys? Dave, I think you should hire me. Look at me, I'm wearing a tuxedo t-shirt. I don't care what you're paying me. If I get to work in my shop, hell yeah. Well, why wouldn't you hire me? <laughs> Come on! My skills, 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 pay the bills. Dave, Kevin, this is Paul Sr. Cross the room. I don't give a Whoa, oh, oh. This is the badass truck. Look at these hands. That's my resume. My name is Mark Chancellor, and I am going bold. So we're going to hold a little competition for one spot at Condigate Design. It would be fun. I'd probably make a lot of dad jokes and hit on them a lot. Whoever lives wins. If you're going to go crazy, then I'm your guy. I live in Keokuk, Iowa. El Paso, Texas. Portland, Oregon. So I'm being all packed my bags right now. I'm on my way. I live, breathe, I sleep cars. We did a nationwide search, and thousands of people have applied. Hello, 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 hello. You never had a brother and sister team before. Nobody's ever seen that. I taught myself everything that I know. Phone shut up. Why are you even on? Am I the best? Probably not. Hopefully, we find some kick-ass talent that'll join our bitchin' team. I just like fast cars and tiki bars. I imagine if Henry Ford was to see this now, he would flip out. This is my passion right here. I want to bring my skills to the table with you guys. It's time for me to take it to the next level. I get really focused. This is the ultimate job interview. I challenge you to wear a kilt and be on the show with me. Twelve candidates from across the country are competing for one job at Condigate Design. We're looking at skill level, craftsmanship, and teamwork. If the work is good, you can stay. If it's not, you're out. Welcome to Bitch and Boot Camp. After a nationwide search and over 2,000 applicants, we've narrowed it down to 12 bitch and recruits. It was a daunting task, but I think we have some 12 very, very talented and interesting people that are going to be going through Bitch and Boot Camp. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's up, buddy? Oh, holy crap. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Whoa, oh, <laughs> Hi. It's the king of bitches. Hey. Thanks. I appreciate that. that no, he was talking about me. <laughs> this is surreal just seeing you guys here. <laughs> You're going to love it out here. It's going to be fun. I can't okay. wait. Thank you. You just barely missed the cut. Oh, I missed the cut. Yeah, you missed the cut. Mm. Well, Dave's got some good news for you. You're in. <laughs> I'm floored. You made the cut. Shut up. You've been chosen to be on Bitch and Boot Camp. Are you serious right now? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, this is a dream come true, man. I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. I survived the cut. You survived the cut. Yeah, I was kidding in the first part. You totally made it, so. <laughs> it's good. Otherwise, I would have had to find one of the guys that did make it and make sure they didn't show up. <laughs> Are you ready? OK, now the pressure's on. 12 people showed up to see if they have what it takes to be bitching. <laughs> I'm so, I have like um, so many emotions going on right now. I'm like excited and I'm scared and I'm nervous and I'm uncertain. I walk into the shop, what are the challenges gonna be? What am I actually gonna be doing when I'm in here? You know, we're gonna see what happens. It'll suck going head to head with my sister, but I definitely think I'm the strongest. I mean, that's just given. Bring it. That's all I have to say. Bring it, Frank. <laughs> when I first walked into this place, I thought, wow, this is great. All nice, expensive tools to use and the stuff I've always wanted to buy for myself. It's a little unnerving to come into a place like this and looking at all this professional grade equipment and I'm just, I'm, I'm stoked. So we've got a 4,000 plus square foot shop set up. We have a lot of metal fabrication I'm, and I'm calling that, I'm calling everything. that our arena. The arena. Yeah, I'm super nervous. I'm really nervous about the whole thing. Walking in the shop, everything's so neat and clean and a little bit intimidating because nothing has been used apparently. The yes. arena of doom. Doom for 11, heaven for one. If I was able to work at Kandiga Design, I think I would learn so much. I think I could win the competition if 50 years of experience doesn't give you some kind of an edge, I don't know what does. I guess I'm mostly worried about fitting in. 
as funny as that sounds. I think that it's a fantastic opportunity and there's so much that I can learn. This is a dream come true. You mess with the best, you die like the rest is, is very true here for all these other contestants. You know, they're gonna come mess with me out there and they're gonna try to beat me on this show and that's just, that's not what's gonna happen. When I came here and I saw how many females were here, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool because I don't know any other women that work on cars. I don't. I think it's worth it to encourage other girls and try to prove the boys wrong, kick their butts. Meeting, action, rolling. Stream 3,500 plus hours of automotive entertainment across your favorite devices, all ad free. Catch new episodes of Roadkill and the Top Gear Ultimate Collection. Plus an exclusive brand new five part series called NASCAR, all in. Woo, woo. Cut, all y'all cut, audio cut, everything cut. You put 12 fabricators in a room, you just never know what's gonna happen. A lot of fabricators have massive egos, so we'll see how this plays out. I mean, we're busy all the way around, so this is a great start to see if we can find some new meat. Good morning. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited to meet Dave and Kevin. I think Dave's got got a great vision when it comes to cars. And Kevin, well, Kevin's Kevin. How's it going? I'm stoked. I'm just so ready for this. I really want to welcome you guys. It's not just bitch and boot camp, but it's also part of the family of Condigate Design. You're going to learn some stuff. You're going to wish you'd learn some stuff. And uh, <laughs> you know, I want everybody, first and foremost, to have fun, be safe, take care to make sure you don't uh, Lose any digits. Uh, everybody got 10 already? Okay, yeah, okay. Well, let's everybody leave with 10. Twist, turns, curveballs, it all starts now. There's some numbers in the hat. We're gonna pass it around. Take one. Do not open it. What? Turns out we all had to draw numbers, and I was like choosing your fate right out of the hat. I wanted to look, but I didn't, so I kind of just like, like took it out and passed it on. Everybody, I want you to open up your numbers. Oh. Seven. All right, lucky number seven. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, what is this for? What are these going to mean? <laughs> maybe it is lucky, maybe it isn't. Either it's really good or it's really bad. So who are the two people with the Kev Dog? The two with the Kev Dog stamps are going head to head. One of you is going home today. Whoa. Whoa. That's sick. Dang. When I heard about the head to head, that's when it got real. Without knowing what the challenge was, I didn't know if I should be concerned or not. Triple stamped of doom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Brianna Hoon. I am 29 years old and from New Ulm, Minnesota. I have been welding for 10 years. The car world I'm relatively new to, so I've done three builds for SEMA now in the last couple years. My daughter has been welding with me in the shop since she was four. I just wanted to know if she can do anything that she absolutely wants to. I'm not the most confident being, so I'm a little nervous. Dun, dun, dun. I didn't even see who else had it. My name is Mike Buttafuoco. I'm 44 years old. My hometown is Carlisle, Pennsylvania. My professional career is in the diesel and automotive industry, basically a jack of all trades. My father had a gas station growing up, an auto body shop, a towing company. I was always around cool cars and cool stuff, and I was always fascinated by them. I think I'm gonna give some of these people a good run for their money. And as for the rest of you guys, you're all leaving right now back to the break room. I was glad because it wasn't me, but I was kind of sad because Brianna was going up first and I felt bad. <laughs> Think they've given them the challenge yet? Well, we yeah, can't hear like... anything. I would have been fine with a Keb dog stamp. I don't like sitting around idly and watching other people compete. All right, guys, I will be camera lady. Because you really want to zoom in and see what they're doing. It's time to get down to business. Let's roll. So what we want you guys to build today is a cylinder with two ends on it. The dimensions on this cylinder is four inches in diameter, 12 inches in length, a half inch by half inch flange return. 20 gauge sheet metal, we got three hours to accomplish this. If you don't see a tool in here that would be easier to accomplish this in a lesser amount of time, make the tool. This is literally what we would ask somebody that is testing to work at Condigit Design. This is the same thing we would test. This test will give us a great indication of both Mike and Brianna's skill levels. There's a very crucial piece of equipment missing from this shop. I'm curious to see how they do without it. On a daily at Kendiga Design, we don't always have what we need. So we have to come up with the best way to get it accomplished. And your time starts now. I don't know, this is a pretty horrible initiation if you ask me. I don't think I've ever had to make a cylinder before. I'm not very good at making exact shapes. OK, I've got three hours. What am I going to get out of the way first?
When the clock started, I thought It doesn't really seem like a lot of hustle on either one part. They're like brand said, new in a shop. Brand new in a shop, and you have to you ha you have to give them that. This isn't their shop. They don't know where the tools are. We just gave them a, a drawing. No one wants to be the first one to go. I just I feel for them, and it, it just it hurts. It's kind of painful to watch. No, she's cutting. No, she's cutting. It's intense. So I'm gonna shear it at 12. The pressure's on. Why is it so high? For the moment, not knowing, just throw you into the lion's den. I don't weigh enough. She can't do it. She can't even cut it. She's not heavy enough. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. It looks like he's starting to uh, produce a pretty nice radius, but it's going to take a couple pieces. So that just means there's going to be some more welding. Well, right now, his diameter, he's about a two-foot diameter, not a four-inch. So yeah. he's going to have to work the hell out of that piece of sheet metal. Improvising. This is a messed up challenge. I'm making them work from scratch. Move it a little bit. Take another bend. Move it a little, take a little bit. It's such a love-hate with metal. Some days it just does what you want, and other days it gives you a big <laughs> middle finger. She should get that rough shape. And, and then work it. Work her caps, get her caps ready, then start tacking it, make her last cut, make sure that it's nice and smooth and round. Kind of on the nerves to have to do it right out of the gate. It's interesting to see how they're executing it, and I see a little bit of hiccups with the tools because none of this stuff has been used yet. Is there a garbage pile? Oh! It's too small. I'm angry. I couldn't get the sheet to roll how I wanted it to. She's thinking, 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 thinking. Oh, I'm just so worried. Being down there and being under pressure, it's a whole different game. You can see people that are actually frustrated and fumbling. Uh, mm -mm. Whatever, I'm just gonna roll with it. Does it look okay? It shouldn't be that complicated. I mean, if you squint at it, it's the right shape. When I was watching that up there, I didn't really feel like anybody was in the lead, per se. I don't know. I don't know who's going to go. It's starting to look like something. And it's interesting to see how they both attack the same problem differently, but somewhat the same. Mike's really got a nice, smooth radius, it looks like. I think they were looking for the particular way you executed your process. If this is a total bomb, Bye-bye. <laughs> it's been nice knowing you. I wish I was the Hulk. Her Brianna looks like she's got a good radius, but it's not even yet. That might be a mistake. It's easier to go beyond where you need to and open it back up oh, than right. it is to try and bend it, because as soon as you bend it when it's too big, you're going to get a kink in it. You're going to have a, no. it's not going to be round. All right, let's rock and roll, baby. Two things were going on in my head towards the end. Finish the welds, get the ends fine-tuned a little bit. Just finish it. Finish it. Oh, yeah. Now the pressure's on. <laughs> the boss is watching. I am just now welding the flanges in kind of forcefully. Uh oh. It looks like the flange didn't go so well. There probably was uh, a little more I could have done. At that point, I had to use the facility so bad. He has time to take the lead. Confidence. You're going to finish in the bathroom? Time's up. The tool's it. down. Give him a minute. Hey, man, when you got to go, you got to go. Yeah. You got to go. While you were gone, time was up. I wanted to finish, <laughs> but I had to go collect my thoughts. Bring your projects over here. Let's take a look. I couldn't even remotely give a guess as to who's going to come out on top. So what was the biggest struggle you guys had making these? I had never used a, sh a shrinker or a stretcher oh, really? to figure out how to make that, yeah. I have no idea what they're going to say. I don't know what they expected. I don't know what they're judging on. And I feel scared. I have never made a perfect circle with a shrinker or a stretcher. I can't even draw a perfect circle with a pen, so. I don't know if I would say hers is better than mine or mine is better than hers. I think hers turned out well. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at these. We're gonna deliberate. You guys head to the break room. Take a break. You earned it. 
It seems like both pieces have something going for them. Now it's time to decide who stays and who goes. They both aren't round. I asked for a four inch diameter, not an oblique. Did you measure your idea. diameter? Oh yeah. I think I might have that up. It's under three, it's close to four. 12 pretty much straight up. He's a hair over 12. On hers, it's just a 12, hair over there. 12. I mean, it's sad, but we're all here for one reason, and that's to win. Brianna overlapped her end caps. I would have definitely said splicing that would have been a smart totally, idea. Totally, totally. Somebody's gonna have to win, and somebody, unfortunately, is gonna have to lose. And I noticed when Mike was building his piece, he was English wheel enough. You're gonna make a football, you run it through that English wheel too many times. There's a more than a shred of doubt in my head. I did my best. Both of them did an upstanding job, a really good job. It's a lot of pressure. Somebody's leaving every day, so it's kind of hard. You can't get attached to nobody. You guys, I'm really sad that one of you is really going home because I we know. both really, I really All right, like I got two kids at home waiting for me. I think you're thinking what I'm thinking. I know I'm thinking what you're thinking. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go let him know. I don't know if I'm staying or going. I'm feeling anxious right now. Hi, gang. Howdy. Hi. Well, day one, bitch and boot camp has come and gone, and pretty quick here, we're gonna find out the first contestant has come and gone. How did you guys feel about it today, Mike? Far as how I feel about it, I feel the same way as I feel about everything. Try, try, and if you fail, failure never beats a try. Mike, something that I noticed about you was you went straight for gloves, jacket, you were in it to win it. Earplugs went in, very focused. Seemingly, you had like an exact idea of exactly what direction and how you were gonna accomplish what we were asking you to do. Very impressive. I've never made anything like that before, uh, so <laughs> you guys definitely threw a challenge at me. How about you, Brianna? Didn't feel real good about any of it. Yeah. Not gonna lie. I didn't know where to grab anything what to use for sure. If I was doing the right thing, I tried not to look at anything he was doing, because that would just make me more nervous. I don't know if I'm staying or going. It's up in the air. If you were still here tomorrow, either one of you, and I'll start out with you, Mike, what would you do different on your next challenge? Pick an idea and roll with it, and just see. I'm the self-proclaimed king of overthinking. A little more planning and think it through before starting. It's fair, it's good. Feeling a little anxious right now. I'd like you just to rip the Band-Aid off. This is the, probably the hardest part for us. It really is. At the end of the day, we have a lot of friends. We make a lot of friends. We consider all of you guys friends. You're all wonderful people. That doesn't get the gravy licked off the hot rod building plate. So, our decision today on day one of Bitch and Boot Camp. Brianna, take your place with the rest of the team. Mike, we're sorry, but you need to turn in your equipment. Thank you. Gentlemen. It was a pleasure. It's a pleasure. You. Very Best nice to meet you. Okay. I can breathe. <laughs> Mike's just wasn't as complete as Brianna's at the end of the day. I think they both had their evils, but you know, you look at it more overall, and Brianna was able to sand hers really nice on the ends, you know, and kind of fill that in where Mike's was still just tacked and open. This is a lot like, we're gonna drag this on and nobody's gonna leave. People are leaving. All right, so those of you who survived day one of Bitch and Boot Camp, congratulations. It's like, you're going head to head with this person and it somebody's getting eliminated first day, you're gone and out of here. Seeing Mike walk out of the shop turned this from a, oh, we met 11 new friends today into a, we're all going home until there's one of us left. Bitch and Boot Camp's gonna continue, so let's get back to the next challenge. At the end of the day, that's part of it. Would it be nice to work for them? Yeah, absolutely, but I'm a survivor, and I'm a thriver. I'll do just fine. Good luck, guys. It was great meeting all of you. I, I really like each and every one of you. I like each and every one of your personalities. Uh, don't kill each other. Kids, mommy, I'll see you soon. I miss you guys. Speeding, action, rolling. Stream 3,500 plus hours of automotive entertainment across your favorite devices, all ad free. Woo -woo.
My name is Des Farrell. I'm 38 and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. So I can do a little bit of everything. I would rock a challenge if it was paint, bodywork, mechanical, anything that's not welding. <laughs> I'm Frank Finelli from Long Island, New York originally. I'm 29 years old. So I've been in the Army for almost eight years now, kind of working on cars for the last five years on my own and I'm a little bit anxious and nervous. Like, am I going to be able to make this work? Hi, my name is Patrick Laughlin. I'm from Tampa, Florida. I'm 38 years old. Come from a military background and I also come from a hot rod background. I'm here to win this thing. I'm here to break all those people off out there. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about Navy Diver? Uh, orange fur. Hey, my name is Justin Culver. I'm 49 years old, live outside Seattle, and this is my shagging wagon. I would consider myself a hobbyist. I want to go as far as I can, of course. Who knows? I have no idea what's coming, and I, I like that aspect of it. Patrick was in the Green Beret. Frank was in the Army. Mm -hmm. Justin was in the Navy. So you throw somebody in there from the Air Force, and we got a whole team. Yeah, we could protect our planet. Or the shop. My name is Russell Alford from Hoax Bluff, Alabama. I am 59 years old. They didn't have to fill the refrigerator with their skills. They're working on their first 100 cars. You know, I'm, I'm way past 1,000 or better, you know? My name is McKinley Thacker. I'm 19 years old, and I'm from Upalco, Utah. My mom lost her mind when I started taking automotive classes. She wasn't too sure about her little girl being enrolled in automotive. I really like to break the mold, to prove people wrong, to surprise people. My name is Josh Sartain. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. I'm 38 years old. I'm going to work slow and steady, because slow and steady is going to win the race. Hi, my name is Gabby, and I'm 25 years old, and I am from Fairfax, Virginia. You know, Gabby, she seems to have a lot of skill, and it's actually self-taught, as I understand. I know my energy can be overwhelming sometimes, so I'm like trying to keep it down, but I'm like, oh, what's up, friend? Like, I... High energy. And... High energy is, is, is that's <laughs> the key. My name is Jamie Helm, and I'm old enough, and I'm from Elgin, Illinois. I am known for being a car chick. I don't paint my nails. I do get bloody. I do get stabbed. I do get burned, and it's fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm Frank Helm, Elgin, Illinois, and I'm 42. I'm the life of the party. I'm exciting. Working with my brother, we have very different strengths and different qualities. Like I told her, coming into this, you better have your A game on because it's all fear, love, and war. So. This is going to be a longevity game and see who can really make it to the end. Game face on, just thinking about what's Dave and Kevin going to throw at us next. OK, guys, for our next challenge. I'm really hoping that it's not a head ahead again. <laughs> this one is going to be a little bit different because you're all going to be involved in it. After the first challenge, I was really hoping I could maybe just set out the second one not partake. All of you guys are going to have an opportunity. One person will be eliminated again. You know, sooner or later, if you don't win this deal, you're going to go, and that, it, it'll be over, period. Kev, you want to tell them a little bit about what we're trying to do today? Hot rodding started in, in a garage somewhere. They didn't always have the fanciest tools. What we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of flat sheet metal, and we're going to turn it into a shape with these hammers. You know, we have all of these awesome tools in the shop. You can't use any of that. <laughs> This is bitchin' boot camp. This isn't, you know, bitchin' kindergarten school. I feel like I'm probably the least experienced person here out of everybody, like. You okay. can use hand tools. You can use the bags. There's hammers, there's dollies. Gonna get back to the grassroots of things. I like old school, I like old school cars. So let's do it. These are what we would call a speed bulge. You guys can take a look at that, what we're after. Take a good look at it. <laughs> I'm taking it with me. <laughs> a 32 Ford Roadster would have possibly a Hemi in it. You need a little extra room for the valve covers because of the pinched nose. I was like, yeah, I'm going to knock this out as soon as I can get started. You know, I want to do it to the best. The speed bump is a very simple test. I'm really interested to see how they use their time and if they can actually follow the instructions to make this simple shape. We're giving them two hours, plenty of time to complete this task. I want to see how they handle being thrown into a new shop and how they manage their time. The winner will get an advantage in one of the next challenges coming up. If there's something in here that you need to make, make it. It's about improvising and getting a job accomplished. I will be looking for the nicest finished piece. I don't care if it has a little bit of chatter from your hammers. I'm looking for the cleanest, nicest piece that you can build in two hours. Get started. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Any kind of really metal fabricator in his garage could do a hammer and dolly job just like what we're asking with very minimal amount of tools. And on top of that, got a really nice sandbag and a plastic mallet. Yeah, they're brand new. I hope I get one of those after this I'd is sure done. like to put my name on one as well. It's just game on for real now. When, like, the two hours start on the clock, it's the do or die moment. This is, this is my world. I love this stuff. My plan for this challenge is to just beat the crap out of it and get the shape I want, and then start fine-tuning it from there. 
I'm trying to figure out how to dent this in the right direction. It's just a basic form. Oh, look at that. He's locking his, he's lo look, he locked his hammer into the vise. The way, that's a, that's a, see, and that's a way to manually smooth the metal as, as it's dented. We couldn't use the wheel, and we couldn't use a plunging hammer, so I didn't want to put a bit, bunch of big dents in it, you know? I'm good. I'm all ready to go, man. As soon as they announced the challenge to us, you know, my mind started going, okay, what can I do differently? I was going to build something cool or go down trying. Like, anyone can swing a hammer at a piece of metal, but I want to try something different. It looks like she is trying to anneal the metal. I'm taking me back to when I used to build motorcycles. I used to build motorcycle tanks from scratch. You start off with a big flat piece of metal and you pound it out so you get that round edge. But I'm gonna start on that bag and beat out my initial shape and start, you know, teaching the metal who's boss. That's probably the that's probably the tactic I would have went with. Is just beat just, go to just it. beat it. Just hammer time. Better swing like the wind. I love it. Like, I legit feel like Tony Stark. I'm like, yes, OK? Like, I'm creating this awesome machine or whatever it is that I'm building. Like, I don't know how this is going to go, so I'm just going to go ahead and try it and see what happens. Gabby's got definitely some dents, some good shape to mm -hmm. it now. I guess I think the key is going to be to smooth those dents out. You really got to put some stink behind these hammers. Beat it, beat it, beat it, stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. Because at the end of the day, you're only, you only need, what? Half inch. My arm's worthless. <laughs> Maybe I should try left-handed. He's already, he's already cutting. Here's another disadvantage for him, though. Cutting is the wrong way to go because I the agree. more you pull that metal in and get more rise, you're gonna need it. Curious to see what will happen with hers next. Yeah, because you, you know she's you, got a lot of bulge just in heat right there. I know, there. but you overheat that metal, and then all of a sudden it doesn't want to move for you anymore. A lot of people working in here at once. So I'm using a little bit more quieter of a shop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I got a singer over here. Whoa. My brother and I collaborate all the time at work, so we've been working together for decades. He tries to big brother me. You dolly it so it's all the same. You can dolly it more here, and then you can trim this and make it more of a teardrop. I don't need the help. I think it's just a big brother syndrome. Yeah, buddy, I tell you what. This is fun as hell. Josh seems to have some good shape in his panel, but he definitely seems to be moving. Dave said he wanted half an inch. I think I'm good. I wouldn't say slow, but very methodical or thoughtful. Mm -hmm. You use the tin snips can be a little more precise. All right, we don't have all the nice tools. We can't go use a shear. So I can cut the half inch now. Pacing myself, not getting too over anxious, not stretching the metal more than it needed to because it was going to be really hard to shrink back. And looks like looks like Dez. Brianna and Dez got some pretty good shape too. I was exhausted. <laughs> My arm was very tired. See, and I think Dez, once Dez, honestly, once Dez gets a good shape in it, she should be able to take that metal and down. smooth it out. Mm -hmm. Patrick's just doing some fine tuning, and you notice how he hasn't cut his panel yet. Yep, I think it's a mistake cutting the panel. I agree with you. You better be the best. If you're going to come out of the out of the crowd. You better wow people with whatever it is that you made. McKinley's cutting something out, and I just, I just really worry that that metal's not going to move now that it's been heated up like that. You made it crispy. It's made it, it's made it like work hardened. So I was thinking, I want to do something a little bit special, a little bit unique. Wanted to make like three kind of cool speed grooves into it, and. The sharp point of the hammer is just helping to put shape in. But I thought if I can execute this well, this is going to come out really cool and set me apart from everyone else. Did my flange on it best you could without anything besides a pair of vice grips and a hammer and a dolly. I had to dodge some sparks from a few of them, you know? Sorry. Now they're out in the shop throwing sparks, and the tensions are high. Sorry, I don't mean to. You can tell that there's some people that hadn't had a lot of tools in their hands, you know? Kind of scary. You know? I was getting some sparks shot at me. Not a big deal. We're all wearing safety gear. Uh, had a few issues with the cutoff wheels. They were shattering. It's not good. I think I need a new one. Damn it, I don't want to get a new one. Look at, look at that. That's still plugged into the air. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, we should have put a stop hands on that. the blade. Oh, jeez. Disconnect your airlines from your air tools, please. Do not change a mandrel in your air tool when it's still hooked to the air. Uh-oh. Did we do this? Especially a cutoff wheel with a between your legs, held against your belly, or with bare hands on the blade. I thought he was going to tell me to go home. 
because it was a big thing. Uh, it, was, it was a big faux pas, and I know better. That was totally me. You bump that trigger, it hurts, trust me. Yeah. And especially if it's between your legs like I seen earlier. We want everyone to compete and have a good time, but we don't want anyone to be hurt, yeah. period. That's, that's no fun. You got five minutes! Five minutes. One minute left. One minute left. One minute. That's it. Tools down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start at one end of the room and work our way to the other. We want to take a look at each of those panels, so stay close to your panel. We're not going to make this just easy. I think we ought to have a little bit of fun with some red and black chips. Yeah, let them sweat it out a little. Each of you are going to receive a chip, red or black. He gets a red, he gets a red, you get a black. Since we're not allowed to leave the state, I'm pretty sure we're not going to Vegas tonight. I'm just worried about what's next coming for those chips. You don't know. I mean, it's always a surprise or a curveball in boot camp. Black for you, black for you, you get a black. Two of my teammates got black and I got the red, so it kind of felt like I was the oddball out. Grab your chips, go up to the break room, leave your panels where they're at, please. Let's go check these out a little closer. This is what is probably one of the deepest pieces we have here. If you have red, hold your hand up. Yeah, if you right. have black, don't hold your hand up. A bunch of people have noticed there's five people with red chips and six people with black chips, so some people are like, the six of us are gonna have to vote somebody off. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was a blast. I do see a very symmetrical flange here, yep. for the most part, and I see just a, a mountain of shape here. I wish I could hear what they were saying. So Russ's piece here kind of concerns me. Yeah, I'm just pulling it out of the air, kind of making it resemble what they were asking for. This one is, just, like I said, to me, this is just not completed correctly. Uh-oh. It doesn't fit. And especially if you push the piece down. Well, when you make something like that, normally you have something exactly. that you're going to fit it to. It'll never, it would never clear. When I do stuff like that free forming and stuff, it's it's to fit something. It's not just a tabletop piece. Josh's piece. The only thing I don't really like about this is I would have liked to have seen a little bit more shape coming out of the flange on both ends. Sure. I hope I'm here for the next competition. His hammer pattern is actually really, really consistent. See how close all of his hammering mm -hmm. is? If I'm not, I know I put it all out there today. I think it's well done. Everyone upstairs, every single one of them thinks they're safe, and that's what makes me nervous. Now, McKinley. Another one. More room over here. No. He said she just wanted to do it different. They're marking something. Are they really? The shape is certainly unique. It didn't do what we asked her to do. No, I agree. This and wasn't so good to watch. Good it just made it worse. Yeah, right? It's a little nerve wracking kind of seeing them evaluate and kind of pick apart what they do and don't like. It's pretty impressive for somebody that survived almost being cut in half by her own cutoff wheel. Who's going home? I definitely think there is some ones that stand out. I'm anxious to see what the decision is. Which are very, very good. I could do it again and it'd be better. I think there's some mediocre ones. I think that safety issue may hurt me in the long run. I think there's a couple of really, really bad, bad ones. ones. Nothing would surprise me. My shape and my depth and everything is point on. I know I'm good. I ain't going nowhere. I think you and I are probably on the same page. Yeah. Let's go talk about it. Well, guys, we're at the uh, end of this day. Thank you very much for all of your hard work. I appreciate that. All the shapes looked very, very good. And with the tools you guys had and the time you had to do it in, I think you all did a great job. Somebody's going to be leaving again, another person. It's freaking real, you know? Everybody uh, has a chip. Hold it up, please. I'm kind of anxious for it and a little bit nervous. But hey, wherever the chips fall, right? I got a red chip. Some other people got black chips. I got a red chip, and I'm not sure what this means, but I'm just hoping that it's good. I don't know. But black is my favorite color, so I'm just going to pretend it's a positive thing. I'm fairly confident I'm going to be staying. Those of you with a black chip, you're safe. So I have the black and they have the red, so I'm like, okay, so I'm better than you guys. I'm super proud of myself. So the fact that I was able to make something and then not only turn it into something that they were looking for, something that I'm really proud of. Everybody with a black chip, take a step to the left. And with that being said, really quickly, we kind of had a little bit of a discussion. I need Gabby and Dez to switch chips. Oh. I see broken wheels at shops all the time. I knew how to put it on, take it off. Don't have the power going on. <laughs> okay, red chip holders, 
we obviously knew at the end of this deal somebody would be going home. We also said at the beginning of this competition that somebody was going to get a strategic advantage on the next challenge. Patrick. Patrick, trade me chips, bud, and join the rest of them. Good job, man. I'm excited to get uh, this challenge over with and get on to the next one, hopefully. I'm damn near that close to calling you Patrick the Plenishing Hammer. <laughs> so, uh, well done. Very well done. Well done. Thanks. It's a competition, so everybody's going to go home but the winner. Accept it, and that's all there is to it. We had a pretty specific goal in mind, and that was a half-inch clearance, mm -hmm. a speed shape that resembled the one that we showed you as a sample. McKinley, you had the idea of doing more of a Harley tank shape. Wasn't super impressed with it. That, that panel was just really lacking shape. I think that I should have went more bold. I was kind of being timid about the way that I shaped it. Russ, that doesn't have a compound bend enough to see. You have to stretch the metal to get the shape that we mm -hmm. asked for. And there was, there's no stretch here. Yeah. This is basically a piece of metal that's been bent. I, I've got my own ideas, you know? Gabby, make sure those air tools are disconnected before you change anything. Your hands, that could have been a terrible mess. A real simple slip on Justin's part or yours, and we could have had a serious, serious accident on our hands. With that being said, you're in the red hot spot right at the moment as well. That brings us to Frank. Mine almost is an exact copy of theirs, just that I didn't have an English wheel to make it flat and smooth. The symmetry's not there. The flange is pretty in and out of play. I asked for a half inch flange. I think we're 3 8 at the fattest. But we've come to a decision who's going to be leaving tonight. And uh, that's based on the criteria that we gave you guys and what we got in return. May the best man win is kind of the only attitude you can have. I gave it what I had. I thought through what I thought I could do. I showed him what I could do. McKinley, you chose as well not to use the sandbag, but to do something different, dig the torches out, anneal the metal. I'm going to tell you right now, it's, it's it was a disadvantage. In the end, I just hope I'm safe and hope that I can continue to show what I can do. Russ, a little wondering what happened there. It's no more fun and games. You know, you're going to go home. That panel was just really lacking shape. There was just, it seemed like it was just one shape. And the flange was pretty hard to identify. Russ, that's, that's about as complex as bending it over your knee. If I'm charging a customer for this and I have an allotted amount of time, that makes it really difficult for me to charge the customer. I'm just paying you to do it and I'm starting over. It is what it is, you know? If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't, you know? Rusty, I don't think your piece was uh, quite bitching enough to move on, so you can go ahead and put your gear up and uh, leave the shop. I think Rusty is very talented. I feel like if he would have used his whole time and finished his piece, maybe I'd be the one at home. He could have done a lot better. He said he was freestyling, whatever that means. Dave and Kevin gave you a piece. You're supposed to, like, emulate it. You should have made a piece that looked just like that. You guys are obviously giving it your all, and you're giving it your heart. Yeah, we appreciate it, too. This stuff is only going to get more difficult as we get further into it. We're losing people at a faster rate than I, I felt like we would. It's exciting and scary at the same time. But before the next challenge, Let's get this place cleaned up. You know, that's just one piece of steel that, that got formed and it didn't match what they wanted. I didn't think it for a moment that I'd be going home. That's not why I came here. Next time, I will uh, stick to the challenge rules a little closer. Now I know what I need to work on and what I should be a little bit more aware of. Sorry I didn't make the shape they exactly wanted, but uh, kind of a free form deal, you know? It's a, Matter of interpretation, I guess. But seeing the shapes now, it's, it's pretty clear who should have gone home from this. Time with you really flies by, buddy. <laughs> Coming up on Bitch and Boot Camp, it's a 1968 Camaro front end. We're going to be doing some modifications. Challenge is a real bumper. They're all cut in half. Oh. You can't keep stopping me. Can you trust your template? Did you love cars? Let's go. We only have 20 minutes. I know, let's go. I'm almost uh, dying of fright. How'd the last three and a half hours go, all right? Oh, they had them chromed. Oh, oh that's wow. gonna look like This bumper's just welded together and shaped. They didn't even do what we asked, period. Actually, they did that opposite of what you asked. Okay. Kevin, quit looking at it. This is a, an embarrassment to fabrication. The bumper that you guys produced was the worst out of all of them.
Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay. Well, guess what? Is it even recording? Yeah. Is it on? No, it's not. <laughs> there we go. Nice. We're not having technical difficulties anymore. We're having First bitchy day. boot camp. First day. <laughs> That's right. First day. day. And look at all these excited yeah. guys. Look at all these excited guys. <laughs> when you're on the island, you hope everybody get a banana until it's just you and the other guy. And then you take him out into the ocean where there's sharks. You make sure you take a pocket knife. Because if you see a shark, you stab him, you get back to the shore. That's the way you survive. David Lee, I hope you heard all that. He's crazy. Man, that seems like it was so long ago. Getting to meet everybody and see what their talents was, that was awesome. It's because it was a long time ago, Dave. It was super cool to see everyone's talents and everybody from across the country that had this same passion that we had. I hope everybody had a good time. We certainly did. Don't forget to watch the entire season of Bitchin' Boot Camp on the Motor Trend app and find out who gets the job at Condigit Design. And head on over to motortrend.com forward slash spring to get that dollar deal. Thanks, you guys. Stay safe and stay healthy and stay bitchin'. Stay safe, everyone.